Okay, to prepare the ferrofluid, first we need to make the iron three chloride solution and the iron two chloride solution. Um, like it says in your book, we will need to make the a one molar iron three chloride solution. So here I have measured out my 1.08 grams of iron three chloride hydrate. So I'm gonna add this to my graduated cylinder. And I'm gonna make sure I get everything in there. Okay, now since I need to add, have a four milliliters of this solution, I'm gonna add my hydrochloric acid up to the four milliliter line here. Um, I'm not gonna add hydrochloric acid beforehand because um, the mass will obviously influence the volume and it uh, won't be the correct amount. So we're gonna watch this carefully. Putting my finger behind the meniscus, underneath it. Perfect. Okay. To mix this, I'm going to pipette up and down to thoroughly dissolve the iron three chloride hydrate. Okay. Ben will do the same thing with the iron two chloride. So for this one, he'll need one milliliter. And I'll add that just to the, so the meniscus is resting on that one milliliter line. And likewise, he will pipette up and down to mix the hydrate. Quite yet. Okay. Do you the solutions? Yeah. Now that both solutions are prepared, we can pour them into our beaker, which is going to be on our stir table here. step will be adding ammonia. Okay, so now we are on step five of creating our ferrofluid, and we are about to add uh, ammonia to our iron chloride solution. Uh, and this has to be done within five minutes. So we've got our timer ready to go. We've got the both of us going at a, a good pace. Um, and so we will start that now, and then by, you'll see the results soon. Okay, we just finished adding our um, ammonia to the in a dropwise fashion to our iron chloride solution. So I'm going to take this away and pull out my micro stir bar with this magnetic wand. There it is. As you can tell, some of these iron nanoparticles are now attaching to my magnetic wand. So I'm just going to rinse it off with some distilled water. Try and get that as clean as possible because I want as many nanoparticles as I can get in my finished ferrofluid.
Okay, that's probably the best that I'm gonna get here. So I'll rest this down and I'll just pull it off. Okay, the next step is to place a magnet underneath your prepared solution here. So I'm gonna pull out this magnet. I'm gonna place it underneath and kind of let it grab most of this. As you can tell, it's holding on to the bottom. So to make sure that we can stabilize it, I'm gonna place it on my test tube rack. And we're gonna let that sit until all the particles um, come and to the bottom and gather at the bottom of the beaker. see you can see the little gathering mound of our nanoparticles so we know that the magnet is working okay so uh, now you can see that all of our nanoparticles have come to the bottom and we've let it settle we're on step 10 now where we're going to separate the clear solution from the rest I'm going to keep the magnet down here at the bottom so that I don't lose my magnetite. I'm going to pour it into my waste, waste beaker. Okay, so anything that I don't want is going into there. Now we're going to pour the rest off of there. Okay. And now, uh, steps 10 and 11 are all about transferring the ferrofluid into our yellow container. This is the container we're going to keep our ferrofluid in. And we're going to make sure not to put it in or magnet container. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water so we can start transferring that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start swirling it. Oops. I'll take this magnet off so it's not still stuck to the bottom. I'll swirl it. Okay. We're gonna open up this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the magnet to sit now on the bottom of this yellow container so that any water that I don't want is going to be separated from our nanoparticles. And you can see it's already separating now, which is great. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do this maybe one or two or three more times to get as much of the nanoparticles out of here as I can and transfer them over. I'm probably going to end up decanting the, the water or any other solution that's in here so we get just uh, pure nanoparticles and uh, that's what we'll be doing for the next few minutes. Okay, so now we have our nanoparticles and our ferrofluids almost complete. What we need to do now is uh, I have my micro pipette and we're going to get about one milliliter, uh, yeah, we're gonna get one milliliter of tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide out of here and add it to our ferrofluids. So let's do that. So here. Okay, set that in there, and uh, do you have a cap? Nice. So we got our cap here, and we're going to start mixing our ferrofluid with the tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide. So this is our surfactant, uh, and as they mix, hopefully, what we'll see is that the uh, the ferrofluid should become more reactive as we as we do this. So. Okay, so as you can see, we've completed our uh, ferrofluid, as you can see here. It doesn't look like it's doing much, but if we hold the, uh, if we hold the, the magnet about a centimeter under it, you can see it starts to uh, form spikes and it changes as I move the magnet. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see all the forces that are uh, working on this magnet. Uh, as you've probably talked about in lecture already and so it really just follows our, our magnet wherever it goes even on the sides so um, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to go through the different activities 
on the back side of the Experiment 7 report, and we're going to show you what happens when we do each of these activities. Seth, do you want to do the first one? Sure, yeah. One is using a magnet from home. And essentially the idea is we're going to use a magnet that's not the neo Dinium magnet. Um, so I'll put this magnet wand up here. I don't know if that's better. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of see a difference in what the other magnet would do. And so you can, in your lab, write up, make a prediction why that happens. Okay, we'll do another activity like it says in the procedure in which we'll do two magnets, one on the bottom, one on the side. Oof. Okay, perfect. Another one asked to put it on the stir plate here, so we'll do that. We'll turn it on and see what happens. Did you lift it up and back anything? Not strong enough, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, for the last uh, for the last activity where we have to design our own activities, uh, the one activity we've decided to do is to leave the ferrofluid at the bottom and see what happens when we uh, apply the magnet in a random place on the side of the container. Nice. For the second activity, um, we're going to go ahead and do another activity where we involve two magnets. Seth, go ahead and hold yours on the opposite side. We'll see what happens when both of these magnets have to compete for the uh, for the ferrofluid. Nice. That's cool.